I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, listen, we've been talking about the opening of the book. And you see, this is so important. And I told you already, we're having a program this week, Friday, at the Three J's Hotel at Otako District in Abuja. Now, this meeting is so, so important for you to attend. If you are in Abuja, plan to attend this meeting. Now, there are certain things God does that if you are not paying attention, you will miss out. One thing that is most important is God's instructions, the instructions he gives. I know many people love to see miracles. Every child of God should expect a miracle every second of the day. But you see, the most important thing with God is the words that are coming from his mouth. No matter your expectation of a miracle, no matter the manifestation you want to see, if you don't pay attention to God's word, you will end up in trouble. I'm telling you the truth. You will surely end up in trouble. What differentiates God and any other being or spirit when it comes to manifestation is the words that he speaks. That is how you differentiate. Sometimes you may not be able to tell if a miracle is fake or real. You may not be able to tell. You may not judge properly, no matter how smart you think you are. But how you know between the fake and the real is the words that is coming out from the preacher's mouth. So that's how you know. That's how you tell which is fake or which is real. The same thing with Jesus. Beyond all the miracles he did, it was the words he spoke that was the most important thing. So that's why I'm inviting you for this meeting because listen, we are going to be exposing ourselves to the word of the Lord. Praise God. That is one thing I guarantee you. Now, of course, there's going to be manifestation. There's going to be healings. There's going to be the different kinds of things happening. But most importantly, it's the instructions the Spirit of God is giving. So listen, if you're in Abuja, plan to be there physically. If you're not in Abuja, we're making an arrangement to stream the meeting and, and so that you too can benefit from, from the meeting. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready? Can we, can we make demand for our daily bread? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now I've been sharing with you certain things that must take place. You know, I told you yesterday, from, from Monday, I began to tell you there are certain things that must take place. These things are lined up already. And if you don't know the pattern, you will miss out or you will misinterpret the prophecy that God has already given. Remember, God says, I will do nothing until... I tell my servants, the prophet, why? So he will know that he's the one doing it. God doesn't just do things and make you wonder. No, he does things so you will know that he is the one and give him glory. Praise God. Satan does things too. But God's ways are perfect. And number two, whatever God is doing is eternal. You can change it. You can fault it. Praise God. It's eternal. Even if you don't accept it, life itself will teach you to accept that what God has done is final. Now, I was telling you earlier why it is so important that you obey, not just obey, pay attention to what God is saying. Now, when you study scriptures, for example, 
You remember when God warned Noah that a flood was coming. And God told Noah exactly what to do. God instructed Noah to build the ark. And he told Noah specifically the rooms to make in the ark. He told him what to do. And in that ark, he said, make room for the animals and then make room for six human, no, eight human beings. Noah and his wife, three sons of Noah and their three wives. That was all. Now God chose to preserve Noah and his generation. See, with in that book, in that ark. So during the flood, every other person that lived on earth perished. Now, think about this. I want you to think about this seriously. Noah had brothers. Now, from, from understanding of scriptures, we, we know that Methuselah was the longest, the one that lived the longest on earth. You, we know that, right? Now, Methuselah lived till the days, actually, Methuselah died the same year the flood came. So, Methuselah was the last ancestor of Noah to die. Then the flood came. If you, if you do the calculation, I have done that calculation you know, one time. If you do that calculation, you realize the flood actually came, maybe, I think, a month or two months after Methuselah died. So, Methuselah saw the end of the building of the ark. Now think about it. Noah had cousins, Noah had brothers, Noah had all these relatives. All of them perished or must have perished in the flood. How then did God save only Noah? I'll tell you how. Because of the word that Noah received. Because of the word that Noah received he paid attention to god's word and because he paid attention to god's word god was able to give him a progressive instruction about the season he was living in and the season that is coming ahead god is speaking in today's world he is speaking now it, pay, it matters what you want to hear from the lord some people just want to hear what they want to hear. So God, speak to me about my business. God, speak to me about my, my future partner. God, speak to me about, tell, you know, some people want to function in the prophetic. Even when you want to function in the prophetic, what's on your mind? What do you want to do? Some want to just have the ability to call people's phone numbers and to wow people. So when they stand and minister and start telling people things, people are wild. How? How did you, you must really be a man of God. But I'll tell you something. God himself said to Jeremiah, he says, let him that glory, glory in this, that he knows and understands me. See? So if you want to function in the prophetic, I'm telling you right now, the best part of the prophetic to function in is the part that gives you insight into the Lord. Insight into his personality. You see, Men will come and go, no matter how great a man of God you are. Men will come and go. Men will hail you today and tomorrow. The same people that hailed you because of the miraculous that they've seen in your life. Tomorrow, they are the same ones that will be saying, ah, I don't even know if he's using real power or not. <laughs> God. But you see, we function in those things to be a blessing to people. And that's where it stops. People get blessed, that's where it stops. But if you really want to walk with God and have an everlasting walk with God, seek for the knowledge of Him. Pray for this, that I may know you. So it's, Paul says that I may know Him. He said everything I have, everything I have been, I count it as dung for one thing. For the knowledge of him. Paul knew how important. And let me tell you this truth. There is no classroom. Believe me. There is, there is no classroom anywhere that anybody can really teach you about God. No. All we can do 
is to give you an introduction to. But you see, the knowledge of him is always personal. And he's the only one that can reveal himself to you. So your job is to put yourself in place where he will find you worthy to receive, to reveal himself to you. And revealing himself to you is not about appearing to you in your dream. No, that doesn't mean you know him. In fact, that's not him that you're seeing actually. Praise God. You know, you know, someone say, I had a dream and God, Jesus appeared to me in the dream and he told me this and he told me that. That's not Jesus. No, that's not Jesus. Praise God. No, it's not. You see, now, no matter how real it looked, that's just the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You see, so what you must take is the words that came from him. Don't try, you know, people have made these mistakes because they saw a figure, they saw a form. They have now moved the whole thing. Now, they don't even pay attention to the words, but they rather pay attention to the description of the image that they saw. But remember, in scriptures, God spoke to Moses. No, Moses was talking to the children of Israel. He said, you remember the day God spoke to you. He was calling them into remembrance. He said, remember that day. He said, you saw no similitude. You saw no figure. Now, that's exactly how God loves to be known. Not by a figure. Not by a picture. I come and make a big shine. No. This is the reason I keep saying this. This is the reason when Jesus rose from the dead. I Kamayando. When Jesus rose from the dead, he rose from the dead in his glory. Now, what do you mean his glory? As he, who he is. Who is he? He is the word of God. So when he rose from the dead, he did not appear even to the disciples in the same figure that they knew him before he went to the cross. He didn't. That's the reason most times when he appeared, they didn't recognize him at first. They only recognized him when he began to speak. Why? Because they knew his words. They knew his voice. But he always changed the figure that he appeared in. This is all written in scriptures. You remember the, the, the Mary Magdalene, when she met him at the tomb, she thought he was a gardener. Do you think she just suddenly forgot who Jesus was? That if she saw someone that died just three days ago, you could not recognize the person. She saw him, she thought he was a gardener. Oh, some people thought Jesus was disguising himself. You know, was playing tricks. Was, do you think Jesus would be playing tricks with them? And she ran to him and said, Sir, please tell me, where did you lay him? But when he mentioned her name, immediately she responded, Rabboni. She knew that voice. The disciples on their way to Emmaus, you remember, they met Jesus. They, now they walked with Jesus for a good distance. He was speaking, they were interacting. Now, they got to the house and then they wanted to eat and Jesus said, oh, okay, let's pray. The Bible said he took bread and broke it. The moment he did that, they said, ah, he is the one. And the Bible said he vanished out of their sight. Now, guess what they began to say when he left? They said, didn't our hearts burn within us when we were in the way? You see, what were they referring to? We should have known that he is the one because we were seeing it. We were sensing it in our hearts. How come they couldn't? These were his disciples. These were not strangers that heard about Jesus. These were his disciples. When Jesus appeared to them, now that's, that's why I always say this. You know, Thomas wasn't a fool. So we call him the doubting Thomas. But guess what? He wasn't a fool. His head, Mary Magdalene, come to say, oh, I've seen Jesus. Oh, you saw him? Yeah, but, you know, uh, it's, it's just that he appeared differently. 
What do you mean he appeared different? I actually thought he was a gardener. Why do you think he was a gardener? Was he hiding? No, he wasn't hiding. But he, he just looked differently. He actually passed. He could have passed for a gardener. So I didn't know he was the one. No, when he spoke, I knew he was the one. I knew. I knew when I interacted with him. Okay. And then these two disciples ran and came from a miles. I said, we have seen the Lord. You've seen the Lord. Yeah, we walked with him and we was talking to us. And Thomas was like, sorry, I don't get. You were walking with the Lord. So until you got to the I didn't know he was the one. Are you guys okay? <laughs> Are you getting it now? Are you guys okay? Nah, look, 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 look. I know he said he will rise. But you see, let's not try to force these things. Me, until I see those nails in his hands. And that hole that that soldier trust a spare through his side. Leave all these things people are talking about. I don't know who you are seeing. I don't know. I, I've been with you guys. And it's not like somebody had a meeting and said, let's try to convince the world that he's alive. I'm not a part of, party to those things until I see him. Now, why was Thomas doing all that? Because he's had different versions of this Jesus that he knows. So Jesus showed up. I said, come, Thomas, put your hand. See that now? Even before Jesus ascended, look at this in Matthew chapter 27. Even before Jesus ascended, Matthew, I think Matthew chapter 28, let me read it to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just before he ascended, Shalem Adus Kredi. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16. Then, watch this now, listening hard then the 11 now remember judas is dead by this time then the 11 not the multitude these 11 disciples that you know their names who were with jesus then the 11 disciples went away into galilee to the mountain which Jesus has appointed for them. So Jesus gave them an appointment to come meet him in Galilee at the mountain, right? When they saw him, verse 17, when they saw him, now these were 11, 11 of them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Among the 11, so Thomas was not the only doubting one, <laughs> praise God. Some of these 11 disciples were still like, are you guys sure he is the one? Now, why was all these things taking place? Because Jesus appeared in different forms. Now, why did he appear in different forms? I'll tell you why. Because exactly what is happening today that people, you know, when you say, have you seen, you know, say, describe, if I tell you, if you're a good artist, for example, and I say, draw a picture of Jesus, guess what you're going to draw? You're going to draw the picture of the white guy that acted that movie called Jesus of Nazareth with the long hair. That's what you're going to draw. You see that? So Jesus didn't want that. The same way Moses told them, God told them, in in, 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 at the mountain. He said, when God appeared, you saw no similitude. The same thing with Jesus. This is how heaven operates. Not by pictures, not by those things, but by words. Words. This is why you must take the word of God seriously. You must take the instructions of God seriously. You must listen to his voice and quit thinking that a vision of a person should appear to you. And most times, when you line up, even when, when people say they saw Jesus in their dreams, when you line up all their stories, you, you think they are talking about the different person. But there's one thing that lines up in all the words that he spoke. There will be consistency in his words. If Jesus is talking to you today and you listen to him, then you listen to Peter Talk about what Jesus said to him. Say, no, we, we actually saw the same person. We heard the same person. Praise God. My time is over. We're going to continue tomorrow. Now, don't forget, pray, plan, and attend the program on Friday. 
it's by 5 p.m. And talk to someone about it during you to attend. God bless you. Bye.